Today we're looking at vector graphics and the process of remaking a logo that we've downloaded from the internet so that when we pinch and zoom on it, it doesn't pixelate or blur. So we're going to open up our S2 logo design file and we are going to page forward until we get to the McDonald's logo. So the first thing we need to do is make a new layer in Draw Plus and we're going to label it My McDonald's Logo. Layering is very important in graphic design because it allows you to turn on or turn off each individual layer so that you can see just what you're working on or see the original version. So with your new layer now activated, we're going to draw a quick rectangle to create a square across the full size of the red square in the background, okay? When you first bring that in, it's going to be a white fill colour with a black outline. You need to change the fill colour to transparent, okay, using the checkered box next to the fill colour. The next thing you need to do is to give it a radius of corners to make it look the same as the red square, in terms of shape at least. Um, okay, so that's that shape now created. Now we are going to attempt to draw one of the golden arcs. And we do that using the quick shape menu again, but selecting the circle menu. But this time, instead of drawing a circle, we're going to attempt to draw an ellipse to be the exact same size as the outside of the left hand arc. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to copy that ellipse and paste it in the same position. And then we're going to adjust the shape of that copied ellipse so that it's the same size as the inside arc, as you can see here. Once we have both arcs in position the way that we want, the next step is to trim off the detail that we don't need. To do this, you need to right click on one of the ellipses and say Convert to Curves. Convert to Curves is an important step because it allows us to use nodes. You've used nodes previously in first year when you were doing your keychain in graphic communication, but the node tool is directly underneath the pointer tool. The node tool is the white arrow. Once you've selected the node tool, Go to where you want to create a node on the ellipse, click and then click break curve. That breaks the ellipse in two. Now you need to make a second break in the ellipse to allow the object or the part of the object to be deleted. So at the other end of that ellipse where the mouse is just now, click again and say break curve. Now what you might be able to see is that the bottom half of that inside ellipse is separate from the top half of the ellipse. Okay, and what that allows us to do is to delete off the bottom part of that ellipse. So you can just click the delete button on your keyboard and it allows you to take away that part of the ellipse, okay? You repeat that same process for the bottom half of the outside ellipse. So just like before, you right click on that ellipse, you convert it to curves, and then you just simply click where you want to break the curve, and then you go to the break curve tool, and you click it, and then you go to the other end of the ellipse where you want to break the curve again, you click again, and you select break curve again. That cuts the ellipse into two separate half ellipses, if you like, and it allows you to just press the delete button on your keyboard to delete away the bottom part of that ellipse. The next step is to draw two straight lines to join both parts of the inner and outer ellipse together. So we're selecting the straight line tool, and we're just going to draw a straight line in the correct position, like so. Then we're going to draw the second straight line in the correct position, like so. Remember that how to get the perfect straight line is you press and hold the shift key as you draw it. Now the next part is possibly the trickiest part of this exercise. We need to select the node tool 
uh, and then we need to join the straight lines up to the arcs okay so we need to press and hold the shift key so that we've selected the straight line and the arc and we need to drag the nodes from the end of the straight line onto the nodes at the end of the arc it is quite tricky but if you persevere with it you will get it okay once you've done one line go over and repeat the process uh, over at the second line the purpose of this part of the exercise is to create one continuous closed shape where all the nodes are joined up. This is a necessary step so that we can fill the object with colour. The next thing that you can do, you can see here that the arc is slightly bigger than it should be. So you can use the node tool to click and hold and drag it into position so that it looks more like the original arc. Okay, so the next step is we're going to use the color picker tool to sample that yellow color of the arc. But before we use it to fill the color of the arc, we're going to turn off the original layer so that we've now only got our drawing. We're going to then go back to our layer. We're going to select that arc. We're going to go to the fill color and then we're going to press on the color that we've just sampled, which was that original yellow. That has now filled this arc with the exact color that we need it to be taken from the original logo. Now all we need to do is turn off that line color of black because that's not in the original logo and we're left with one half of the McDonald's M logo. Now we're going to select it and we're going to say edit copy and then edit paste. Now it's made a direct copy of itself on top of itself. And the next thing we want to do is we want to mirror that and then we want to move it along horizontally using the cursor keys on the keyboard. Okay, and we're going to move it into position until we have that instantly recognisable McDonald's M logo. The next thing we want to do is to go back and turn on the original layer to reveal the original logo so that we can colour sample that famous red colour. So we click the colour picker tool, we click on that red square, you can see that it's filled uh, that colour sampler with red. We turn off that layer now and we go back to our original layer. We use the black pointer tool to select our square and then we click the fill colour, like so, and then we click that red. Okay, that has filled the background that we created with red. Now, what we need to do is get rid of that black line going around the outside of that square. So we click on the line colour and then we click the, the checker box. That removes the black line. So what we have done now is we have recreated that logo and we can go back to the original logo to see the difference. So if we go to the original logo and we zoom in, you will see that it's pixelated at that edge there and it's quite blurry. This is because when you zoom in in pixels, they lose their definition and become blurred. If we turn that original layer off and we go to our new graphic, the one that we created, we can see that there is no blur and there won't be any blur regardless of how many times you zoom in on it. That's because our new logo doesn't have pixels. Instead, it contains a series of lines, shapes and colours. This type of image is known as a vector image. Okay, so now that you've created it, we need to actually save it as a vector file. So we select it all and we go to File, Export as Picture and make sure that the format that we're saving it as is an SVG file, which stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. Once you've done that, you should then save it to your Dropbox and then turn it in on Teams so that your teacher can review it.